It doesn't happen all the time, and some critics might say it doesn't even happen most of the time. But the other day, the Democratic Party did something that makes a lot of sense. At President Biden's urging, it took the first steps towards removing Iowa as the first state in the presidential nominating cycle. Iowa was always a strange choice. I mean, it looks nothing like the diverse, working-class makeup of the Democratic base. How can it be when the state is 90 percent white? But it took a real debacle, the Iowa caucuses in 2020, with the broken app that was supposed to tally votes and the delayed data and all-out chaos, really, for Democrats to make the decision they should have made years ago to make a change. It was a chance to pick a new state to go first that reflects the country's diversity, and especially the black voters who have helped produce so many Democratic Party victories recently, as well as a state that reflects Democratic Party values, like support for organized labor. President Biden is pushing the party to pick South Carolina, which has been well received by a lot of people inside the Democratic Party, especially because of its large black population. Black voters, as I said, deserve recognition in Democratic Party primaries. And remember, black South Carolinians helped Joe Biden win the Democratic presidential primary. Thank you, thank you, thank you, South Carolina. We just won and we've won big because of you. Now, some critics on the left are saying that Biden picked South Carolina because it saved him in 2020. If you'll recall, Biden came in fourth in the 2020 Iowa caucuses, once Iowa actually figured out how to count the votes, and fifth in the second nominating contest in New Hampshire primary. But Biden's win in South Carolina turned his entire campaign around. It all but catapulted him to the nomination and helped him defeat Bernie Sanders. So you can understand why he might be loyal to the state and why now the Democratic National Committee is set to vote next year on Biden's proposal to make South Carolina the first nominating contest in the country. But you also might understand why some on the left are suspicious of Biden's pick of South Carolina. In fact, one high-profile vote against the plan at the DNC next year will come from Fez Shakir, who, run, who ran Bernie Sanders' 2020 presidential campaign. Shakir wrote a New York Times essay on Monday denouncing the choice for a multiplicity of reasons. He writes, quote, South Carolina is not a battleground state. Mr. Trump carried it by double digits in 2020. Let's not compel all other Democratic campaigns to waste more money that could be better spent elsewhere. Shakir notes that South Carolina has the lowest per capita union membership of anywhere in the country. He also points out that Georgia, Nevada, and North Carolina are better candidates. Of course, they're battleground states in the general election, unlike South Carolina, which went for Trump by almost 12 percentage points in 2020. And just look at the demographics. If Democrats want a state that reflects their strong base of black voters, and they should, Georgia is 19 percentage points ahead of the U.S. average when it comes to a black population. South Carolina is just 13 points ahead. Or if Democrats prefer a state that closely matches the U.S. population in the general election, North Carolina and Nevada resemble the U.S. as a whole much more than South Carolina does. So when it comes to the idea of replacing Iowa with South Carolina, Shaka says the whole thing would be comical if it weren't tragic. The pushback to his argument has been, well, it's been something. Politico spoke to a Biden advisor who asked to remain anonymous, and when you see the quote, you'll understand why. Here it is. Making sure that the Democratic Party's most loyal voters, black voters, are at the front of the line and not at the back of the bus feels like something no one should be arguing about. Yes, that is a very real and, I would argue, very offensive quote. There was also strong pushback from DNC chair Jamie Harrison. Zero tolerance, zero for any disrespect or dismissal of black voters. Fez Shaka responded to Politico, it's a very insulting approach to suggest that somehow we don't care about black voters because we think South Carolina shouldn't go first. Come on, get real. Much to discuss then. Joining me now, Simone Sanders Townsend, a veteran of the 2016 Bernie Sanders campaign and the 2020 Biden campaign. She served in the White House as deputy assistant to President Biden and is now the host of Simone on MSNBC and here on Peacock. She had her own response this week to Faith Shacker's essay, quote, the idea that it is a waste to spend time, effort and money in South Carolina is flawed and demonstrates a fundamental lack of understanding of the process. Ouch. Simone, thanks so much for coming back on the show. It is always a thanks, pleasure to, to talk with you. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with you here, so let's try and run I through this. I do you agree. <laughs> in, in good faith, let's run through this. South Carolina hasn't voted Democratic in a presidential election since 1976. In the 2020 Senate election, their Democrat Jamie Harrison, who I quoted a moment ago, 
spent $130 million, couldn't unseat Lindsey Graham. Tell us why Fez Shacker is wrong to say the Democrats should start their primary process in a swing state like Georgia, Nevada, Michigan, rather than a safe red state like South Carolina. So, you know, many I've been around Democratic politics for uh, a very long time. And part of the conversation in the party, as my last is trying to attack me, is about uh, do we represent a depth and breadth of voters? Now, I'm recovering Democratic strategists. Now I host a show. I'm very happy about that. Um, and I think the idea that because places are some very red places, right, they, uh, the state itself does not vote for Democrats as a whole, is, is not to me a sound reason why Democratic candidates, especially presidential candidates, whom, if they have the opportunity to be elected president, would represent the totality of the American public, should not go and be there. The, specifically, if we're talking about South Carolina, look, I think the primary process for Democrats, we can talk about the primary process for Republicans, but the primary process for Democrats should be laid out in a way that helps you pick the strongest candidate. And so that is why the primary process requires folks to go to various constituencies, states that have different yeah. makeups. It is not a, the swing state argument. That's what the DNC is there for, right? The DNC is there to have an operational apparatus across key states so that when a nominee is picked, they are not starting from scratch. And so I just okay. don't, I, I, I think if the swing state argument is the argument folks are going for, well, that's what the party supposed to be doing. So what about his argument that South Carolina is the worst unionized state in the country, that the primary process is a reward for states that go first? It's a boost for their local economies, and you'd be rewarding an anti-union, anti-organized labor state by giving the first spot to South Carolina. Well, you know, I think that the reality of the national, of the, of the statewide uh, politics of South Carolina is, in fact, real. But the Democrat, we are talking about a Democratic primary electorate. We are not talking about uh, what happens statewide. And I think that is, that is where I think the fundamental misunderstanding comes from. Who is the Democratic primary electorate in that state? What does it look like? Are, um, are there ways to, to, to grow the party? And I think that is what people should be focusing on. Look, there's, you know, South Carolina is an anti-union state as a whole. But the black population in South Carolina, much like black voters and Latino voters and Asian American Pacific Islander voters and white voters across the country, so they deserve to hear from the candidates who would like to represent them. And let me so just, let me just, let me just say what my former okay. colleagues wouldn't, Maddie. Let me just say my former colleagues in the White House would not. I think the reality is, and I have worked for both, as you noted, Senator Sanders and President Biden on both of the campaigns. I have ran two campaigns and worked on and ran two campaigns in South Carolina, yeah. one unsuccessful, one very successful. The reality is, in the op-ed that um, Faz writes, he talks that... He's, he notes that North Carolina is a better option, could be a better option for Democrats. It's a, it, it, is a, it is a state that is trending blue, right, um, a, a, a diverse electorate. The reality is, is that Senator Sanders could win a Democratic presidential primary in North Carolina. He has yet to be able to win a Democratic presidential primary in South Carolina, okay. and we have yet to have that conversation. So, so let's park the Biden-Bernie arguments for a moment and just look at the bigger point about representation diversity. Is it not disingenuous, Simone, for people to attack Shaka and others who question the South Carolina decision as being somehow anti-black voter, as Jamie Harrison did, for example, when Georgia, which is the state that a lot of people prefer, including Fez Shaka, has a much higher percentage of black voters in South Carolina, as well as a much higher percentage of Latino voters? Yeah, Georgia has, uh, for folks at home, 1.1 million Latino voters in the state of Georgia. 50% of those voters are concentrated in the uh, Atlanta metropolitan area, Gwinnett County, Fulton County, a lot of places we were recently talking about uh, in the Georgia runoff. Look, I don't think it is fair to say that uh, Faz is anti-black. You know, I know him. I, I, I don't think his argument is anti-black. But I do think that the argument does not take into account what the primary process of the Democratic Party is for and how the demographics of the party have changed uh, and how when the process was originally set up, who it was set up for and who it was set up for lack of a better term, against. And I think yeah. that there should be robust debates inside the Democratic Party yes. apparatus about what puts them in the best possible po position to compete yes. against their Republican counterparts. And I think that's what he was trying to do. I thought some of the responses were pretty offensive. You served in the Biden White House. What is your response to an unnamed aide saying that Faith Shacker's argument amounts to sending black voters 
to the, quote, back of the bus. That is an outrageously offensive claim, is it not? And I find it odd that the Biden White House never uses such strong and even vicious language to describe the mansions or the cinemas of this world. But a Bernie person says something they don't like, and suddenly he's a segregationist. Well, I think there was very strong language for uh, Senator Manchin when he went back on a deal with President Biden, if I do remember. Look, it's not a quote I would have given. Uh, I, I don't think we need to resort to Jim Crow era analogies to talk about black voters inside the Democratic Party apparatus. But the reality of it is this. A Democrat has not, Democrats in a presidential election, they haven't won white voters nationally since Lyndon B. Johnson. Not even Bill Clinton won the majority yeah. of white voters in a presidential election. And I think that's something to think about. And so your strongest candidate is someone that can appeal to a wide breadth. Yes, white voters, black voters, Latino voters, a Asian American Pacific Islander voters. And the primary process should be designed to do just that. The DNC is there yeah. to ensure that in all these swing states, Folks are ready to go when the nominee is picked. So I said, let's park Bernie Biden. Last question before we finish. Let's come back to it. We showed Joe Biden on stage with South Carolina Congressman Jim Clyburn, mm -hmm. whose endorsement helped him win the 2020 primary there and clear his path to the nomination. Simone, do you understand why some on the left see this as a cynical, self-serving move, which will help Biden win again in 2024, avoid any primary challenges against him, which would rely on, say, in Nevada going first? So I, I, I actually do not agree with this um, idea that this ensures that Joe Biden or let's just even say if Vice President Kamala Harris is to run for president in 2028, this ensures that she is viable and other people are not. I don't think so. Look, I think the Democratic, the Democratic Party apparatus, the voters of that apparatus, they are sophisticated voters. Black voters aren't just voting for Joe Biden because Jim Clyburn told them to. Right. I think that we have to unpack that. Folks were looking to see who Clyburn thought was the best to represent the ideals and the values of South Carolina voters, and a number of people weighed heavily his endorsement. But in all of the times that I've um, participated in races in that state, in South Carolina, much like in Iowa, right, much like in New Hampshire and any of the other first four states um, that have had the opportunity to go first in the Democratic primary process, Voters are looking for who represents them and their values and what their plan yeah. is to essentially make their lives better. And I think that black voters in South Carolina are just as sophisticated as voters in New Hampshire and Iowa, and they can make their own determination.